Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to everyone. So you are with me, Razia Adam, for JKE 316E Quantitative Economics. So today, okay, uh, we'll be discussing part four. Uh, we'll be on the topic of hypothesis testing. Okay, this is a continuation of the previous part. Okay, uh, specifically today we'll be discuss the case of two populations or two samples. As usual, our main reference, okay, the resources that I'm using, okay, the text is Keller. Okay, uh, edition 2012, the 9th edition, managerial statistic produced by Southwestern Sengage Learning Mason. While the slide is actually from Keller, 8th uh, edition, okay, in 2009. So all the copyright of the slide, as usual, belongs to uh, Sengage Learning as well as uh, all the other sources that I put uh, on the slides. Okay, uh, for the next half hour or so, we'll be looking at these two objectives. First, uh, I'll be... Uh, recapping a, a little bit of what we did in part 3 okay that is from chapter 11 to chapter 12 on hypothesis testing and then we'll move on to chapter 13 uh, for today when we compare uh, two uh, population or two sample okay in the case of hypothesis testing okay let's recap what we did in part 3 okay uh, step 1 in hypothesis testing is where you need to set out your null hypothesis Okay, H0 as well as your alternative hypothesis, your HA. There are two cases of uh, your hypothesis. It can be uh, alternative hypothesis, a one tail test. Okay, this is on the left hand side of the screen. You can see that one tail test is possible in terms of uh, the word greater than or more than. So if you look at your alternative hypothesis, H1, you see the symbol greater than. Okay, and on the other hand, if you have the keyword such as less than, or lesser okay or smaller than okay a certain value then it should be the second case where your alternative hypothesis your h1 will be using the symbol less okay and the other type of hypothesis testing okay in the case of two tail so the keyword is um, the word difference okay the the question is asking you to test for different to test for equality so you have your equality symbol in your h0 and then you have the unequal symbol in your alternative hypothesis, your H1. Okay, we still recap okay, what we did in part 3. So now we are, uh, we are looking at step 2 in hypothesis testing. In, in step 2, this is where you need to state your level of significance. Okay, uh, the normal assumption is that we, uh, we assume that your distribution is normal. So in the case of 1% level of significance, Okay, you just need to remember for one tail test, the Z value, okay, the critical value that you need to remember is 2.58, while in the two tail test, the Z value will be uh, plus minus 3.09. Okay, uh, just now when we look at the one tail test, for 1%, the Z can be positive 2.58 or Z can be negative 2.58. Okay. Uh, if the question or if normally, uh, okay, if they don't set, okay, the level of significance, then you can always assume it's 5% level of significance. So the value, the critical value for one tail test will be Z equals to 1.64. It can be positive, it can be negative, okay, depend on the uh, step one just now, okay, the alternative hypothesis. Or, okay, for two tail test, the critical value of Z will be plus minus 1.96, okay, uh, so the question suddenly asks you, okay, to do for 10% level of significance, but if they ask you to do, then you need to find the one tail critical value as well as the two tail critical value. So this is step two of hypothesis testing. Okay, now we are looking at step three of hypothesis testing. Okay, don't get scared of all the formula that you sh that is shown on screen. Okay, um, in step three, hypothesis testing, this is where you need to calculate your test statistic. Okay, uh, normally we start with large sample where we assume that large sample will be using normal distribution that is the Z table. So all your test statistics will be in terms of Z value. Okay, on the uh, right hand side of the screen, you see the test for small sample which will be using the student T distributions. In other words, you need to look at the T table. Okay, let's look at the normal distribution, the Z table, okay, the formula. Uh, the, the one on the left hand side, the furthest uh, on the left hand side where z equals to x bar minus mu divided by sigma divided by square root of n, that is the test statistic, uh, the formula of test statistic for the case of one mean test. Okay, 
Uh, the one in the middle, where z equals to uh, estimated p, okay, p with a hat there is estimated p, okay, minus p divided by square root of p in bracket 1 minus p uh, close bracket divided by n. That is the case of uh, the test statistic formula for one proportion. Okay, so we already covered this in step 3. And then in the case of small sample, okay, I hope you remember when we discuss small samples, this is where your n, okay, your sample size is less than uh, 30. So for small sample, okay, uh, you just need to adjust the formula instead of z. Now you're looking at t, okay, so t, the test statistic, okay, is equal to x bar minus mu instead of sigma. Now you have s divided by square root of n. So that's the difference between large sample, okay, z, z test. And then small sample is a t-test. Okay, so that's the first layer of formula, okay, for one population or one sample test. Okay, for today, what we are looking uh, forward is we'll be discussing the two population or two sample tests. Okay, this is the bottom part of the screen where you see all this formula. So you, you have on the left-hand side, z equals to the one in bracket, x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Okay, close the bracket and then deduct with uh, another bracket, mu1 minus mu2. Okay, everything divided by square root of sigma1 square, divide, divide with sample size 1. Okay, plus square root of uh, uh, sample 2 square, divided by the sample size of number 2. Okay, so from the formula itself, okay, you see the difference in that, okay, we have two sample. Everything is x bar 1, x bar 2, mu1, mu2, and then you have sigma1, sigma2. Sample size number one and sample size number two. Okay, same thing. The one in the middle, you have the two uh, proportion test. Okay, still z test for two proportion. So you have estimated p one. Okay, divided with uh, estimated p two. Okay, divided by everything. Okay, square root p in bracket one minus p, and then you have another bracket one over uh, n one plus one over n two. So remember, okay, when we look at this formula, you have to be careful when you do the manual calculations, okay. Uh, you need to calculate, okay, the numerator, okay, uh, the one on top, okay, and then you need to calculate the uh, denumerator, the one below, and then you have you have to solve, okay, numerator divided by denumerator. If you are not careful, you might get the wrong final answer. Okay, and the one that I'm most uh, interested in today, okay, is the one on the left hand side of the screen, okay, the formula for T, okay, two samples, T test, so the same thing, okay, you can compare the Z test for two sample and the T test for two sample, it's still X bar 1 minus X bar 2 in bracket, okay, minus with my, mu 1 uh, minus mu 2 in bracket, and then everything, uh, divide with square root of SP squared. That means SP is the combination uh, sample standard variant, uh, standard deviation. Okay, F and then multiply with in bracket 1 over N1 plus N 1 over N2. So that's the only part of the formula where you can see the difference. So do take note of the difference between Z and T formula. And in the case of one sample or one proportion test as well as two proportion tests. So this is very important then only you know which formula that you need to use. Okay, we're still recapping, okay, part 3, hypothesis testing. Now we are looking at step 4, okay, after you have done your test statistic, this is where you need to make a decision, okay. You make your decision by comparing the critical value that you already determined from step 2 and then, okay, the test statistic that you already calculated in step 3, okay, it's very simple. Okay, if your test statistic is less than your critical value, okay, basically what you, you're going to say is that you fail to reject your H0. Okay, not H0, that it should be H0 with a smaller O. Okay, so basically when you fail to reject H0, you can conclude that there is no significant evidence at the 5% level or it can be at the 1% level or even at the 10% level. Okay, on the other hand, if you see that your test statistic in step 3, is greater than the critical value that you set up in step 2 so you can reject your hash not okay when you reject your hash not basically you can conclude that there is significant evidence at the 5% level blah 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 
Basically, we have done a recap of uh, the four or five steps of hypothesis testing. So remember, you need to state your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis in step one. And then you need to determine your critical values in step two. And step three is where you calculate a task statistic. Step four, you make a decision whether to reject or to uh, do not reject hash not. And then step five, you make your conclusion based on your decisions. Okay, now for chapter 13, instead of looking at one population, we'll be looking at two populations. So here, we are still talking about hypothesis testing, but this time, we are making inferences about if comparing two populations. So it can be two population means, or it can be two population proportions. Okay, when we talk about comparing two populations, okay, let, let's remember what we did before. Okay, previously, we, we look at the techniques to estimate and test parameter from one population only. So you have either one population mean, mu, or you have one population proportion, p. Okay, uh, for now, we will still consider this parameter when we are, okay, when we are looking at two po populations. However, our interest now will be the difference between two means or the difference between two proportions. Let's look at the difference between two means. In order to test and estimate the difference between two population means, we draw a random sample from each of two population. So initially, we will consider independent sample, that is sample that are completely unrelated to one another. So you have on the left hand side, okay, the populations, okay, for population 1 in this case, with parameter mu1 or sigma1 square. And then you, you have from the population a small sample okay, being taken out. So the sample size N1 and the statistic for the sample X bar 1 as well as uh, S1 squared. Okay, for the same thing, population 2, you can consider mu2, okay, uh, sigma 2 squared, okay, sample size N2, X bar 2 and uh, S2 squared. When we look at the difference between two means, okay, because we are comparing two population means, we are going to use the statistic x bar 1 minus x bar 2. We assume okay, this uh, x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is an unbiased and consistent estimator of mu 1 minus mu 2. Okay, before we go further, let's look at the underlying assumption when we discuss uh, the two means, uh, populations means. Okay, uh, in terms of the sampling distribution of x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Okay, the first one, we assume that uh, x bar 1 minus x bar 2, okay, is normally distributed if the original population are normal. Or it can be that x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is approximately normal if the population are not normal, but, okay, the sample size are large enough. That means n1, okay, and n2 are both more than 30 or greater than 30. The second assumption is that the expected value of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is uh, known as mu 1 minus mu 2. And the third uh, sampling distribution assumption is that the variance of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is given as sigma 1 square divided by sample size 1 plus sigma 2 square divided by sample size 2 and the standard error is taken as the square root of sigma 1 square divided by n1 plus sigma 2 square divided by n2. Okay, so this is the underlying assumptions for x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Okay, let's look at uh, making inferences about mu 1 minus mu 2. So remember, we start okay with uh, sample statistic x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Now we are making inferences about the populations mu 1 minus mu 2. Okay, since we know that x bar 1 minus x bar 2, which is normally distributed, if the uh, original populations are normal or pre, uh, approximately normal if the population are not normal and the sample size are large then we can have the z uh, formula in term of z equals to x bar 1 minus x bar 2 okay in bracket and then you have to deduct okay uh, mu 1 minus mu 2 okay in bracket from the previous part okay that's the numerator Okay, the one on top, and then you have the denumerator, square root of sigma 1 squared divided by n1 plus sigma 2 squared divided by n2. So this is assumed to be a standard normal or approximately normal random variable. We could use this to build the test statistic and the confident interval estimator for mu1 minus mu2. We are still discussing about making inferences about two population means, mu1 minus mu2. Okay, based on the formula that we have just now, 
okay, uh, which is being repeated on screen, okay, we just take note that in practice, okay, the Z statistic is rarely used because the population variance, okay, the one that I highlighted in red, okay, sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are unknown, okay, so I put a question mark there. So because of that, what we are going to do is that we are going to replace the Z formula with a T formula. So we are going to use a T statistic. Okay, we consider two cases for the unknown population variance when we believe that they are equal and conversely when they are not equal. So I'll be looking at the first case when the population variance are equal. We are looking at the test statistic for, uh, for hypothesis testing in step 3 for the case of two populations, okay, me 1 minus me 2. But now we are looking at the case of equal variance. Okay, so we, are, we need to calculate uh, SP squared. Okay, SP, remember uh, this stand for uh, standard variance or standard deviation for the pool uh, estimator. Okay, so SP squared is the pool variance estimator. Okay, so remember, okay, in case you, you get confused, okay, S is standard deviation, okay, S square is variance. So the, the symbol P there is just to show that this is pool or combined variance estimator. How do you calculate SP square? The formula is that, okay, we have uh, N1 minus 1, okay, this is something like the degree of freedom for sample 1, okay, N1 minus 1 in bracket, you multiply with S1 square, and then you, you add to that, okay, N2 minus 1, the degree of freedom for the second sample, okay, in bracket, multiply with S2 square. So you have everything there on top or the numerator. And you divide everything with the combined degree of freedom, okay, the one as denumerator N1 plus N2 minus 2. So this is actually taking a weightage of the uh, two sample by using the degree of freedom. So the formula that you can use or you need to use in step 3 of hypothesis testing, okay, instead of Z now, everything become T. Okay, instead of Z, you have T equals to, okay, X bar 1 minus X bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2, okay, and the denumerator is taken as square root of SP squared multiplied with 1 over N1 plus 1 over N2 in bracket. So make sure, okay, you do it right when it comes to calculation, manual calculation especially. Okay, solve the one in bracket first, multiply, okay, and then take the square root, okay, then you have the denumerator, then only you take the numerator on top, divide with the denumerator. And don't forget, okay, the degree of freedom, okay, for this pool variance estimator is taken as new, okay, that V symbol is what we known as new in Greek. So, new is equals to M1 plus N2 minus 2. Okay, this is not an extra formula. If you remember, okay, when I first introduced to you the degree of freedom, degree of freedom is simply uh, for one sample uh, population is just N minus 1. So, when you have two samples, so you have to add up the two samples, N1 plus N2, and then you minus 2 because you minus 1 and minus 1. That's it. Okay, now we are going to look at the formula, put it in, in one example, and let's do the first step of hypothesis testing. So, we have here a bank which is concerned about the increase in the number and the amount of bad debts as a result of the recession. So, a small random sample of debts in 1990, in 1992 are being selected. So, this is a bit outdated, okay, but we still can use it for the purpose of illustration. Okay, the relative size of the samples for the two years is proportional to the total number of deaths. The distribution of deaths means median, standard deviation, and sample size are given below. We are still discussing about the bad debts uh, for a bank. So you have two different set of data. The one in the middle is for 1990. The one on the right hand side of the screen is for 1992. So you have the mean values for both years, you have the standard deviation, and then you have the sample size. Okay, we are still discussing the bad debt uh, example for a bank. So let's say here, okay, we have the question asking you to test whether there has been a significant increase in the mean debts at the 5% level of significance. Okay, so in this case, the keyword is significant increase. So it tells you that, okay, one tail or two tail tests. Of course, okay, significant increase is one direction only, so this is a one-tail test. 
5% level of significance for one tail test so you need to remember positive 1.64 so this is your critical value whether to accept or to reject H0 later okay and then you need to calculate okay significant increase so this is one sample mean index okay uh, the normal uh, step 3 okay you need to calculate mean okay put it in the one mean uh, value uh, okay formula so you have z equals to 1.75 so basically the decision you will be rejecting your hash naught okay uh, in part b okay it's possible that the question asks you to test whether there has been a significant increase in the proportion of debts over 20,000 ringgit given that proportion of debts is in 1990 is 0.2 or 20% and in 1992 the proportion of debts over 20,000 ringgit is 30% or 0.3 respectively so this is um, a two proportion test okay so you have z equals to 1.51 and then your decision will be fail to reject hash naught Okay, we are looking at uh, the part one of the question just now, which asked uh, whether there has been a significant increase in the mean debt. Okay, uh, this is sorry, uh, this is not a one uh, mean uh, hypothesis testing. Okay, this is actually two uh, different uh, or two mean uh, hypothesis testing. Okay, because it's asking a significant increase in mean debt. That means you need to look at okay whether 1992 is greater than 1990. Okay, so if 1992 is greater than 1990, so it shows that the bad debt has increased. So in this case, you need to replace the values into the formula. Okay, okay, so you have 16.5 minus 22.1, and then you divide with the denominator. You take the square root of 19.8. That is the standard deviation for 1990. Okay, 19.8 square divided by the sample size 76. And then you have standard deviation for 1992, 23.7, okay, square divided by 102, okay. So you have the answer, 91.715. So basically, we are done with the uh, continuation of hypothesis testing where we discuss two sample, uh, two populations or two sample uh, mean tests or two proportion tests. Okay, so remember, okay, what we did today is basically the, the one formula on the bottom part of the screen is either Z test, okay, X bar 1 minus X bar 2, blah, 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 okay, except that the population variance is unknown, so instead of Z, we need to change, okay, Z into T, okay, so you need to calculate, okay, your uh, variance for the uh, pool estimator, and then you have the uh, two proportion test, the one in the middle, P1 minus Okay, uh, one thing when we discuss about hypothesis testing, okay, it's possible that your tests are wrong. So, in this cartoon, okay, uh, okay, it shows that uh, if you keep on doing the test, okay, it's possible. In this case, we start with uh, a statement that you are testing uh, jelly beans cause acne, okay, and then uh, you found that there is no link between jelly beans and acne with a probability greater than 0.05. Okay, no link, that means you fail to reject H0. Okay, uh, and then let's say you continue further since you you know that or you, you have heard that it's only a certain color that cause acne. Okay, and then you do the test. You found no link between purple jelly beans and acne. Okay, and you do with uh, uh, brown jelly, okay, and pink jelly and so on and so forth. You found no link between them. If you look at the cartoons, okay, if you keep on doing hypothesis testing, okay, this cartoon tells you, okay, and share with you an important point about hypothesis testing. If you test enough things, you are bound to find something that is significant. So suddenly, okay, you see that what came out on the news there, green jelly beans linked to acne. And you are 95% confident with your statement, okay, even if it's only 5% chance of coincidence. So be careful, okay, whatever that you are testing, make sure that you have... Uh, especially in economics, you have the basis of theory, then only you do the testing. I just want to share with you something, okay, about the professor le uh, lectures that I've attend today. So we have two professors, okay, uh, giving their inaugural lectures. Okay, uh, in the first case, we have Professor Abdul Rahman, who, who, dis who actually lectured about the durable T-test. Is it so? So, uh, it's actually an interesting read if you manage to find, okay, his articles online. 
okay it's actually about the discussing the different type of hypothesis test okay especially for the two proportion okay however what i discussed today is just a very basic hypothesis test for two proportion in case you are you are interested you can always read okay uh, the other hypothesis test for two proportion okay online other than uh, the unequal variance okay type of t test that we discussed today uh, yesterday Okay, another type of test that you need to know is what we call uh, in the case of equal variance. So it's still uh, comparing two populations using t-test, but in the case of equal variance. Okay, the unequal variance is the case of pool, uh, pool uh, sample t-test. Okay, and another type, okay, which I won't go uh, in deeper is uh, what we call as the match pair t-test. Okay, if you look at the slide uh, currently on screen, okay, this is uh, step part three of hypothesis testing. This is where you need to calculate your test statistic. So if you look at the t-test part on the right hand side of the screen, okay, you see all the different formula. Okay, as I mentioned to you again and again, okay, do not get scared of the formula. It looks that you have many formula, but in fact, what you have is a variation of the same formula. So if you look at the t formula. Okay, on the right hand side, okay, and compare it with the Z formula on the left hand side. They are more or less the same, except that instead of talking about population variance, sigma, we uh, replace it with the uh, sample variance, that uh, sample standard deviation, that is S on the right hand side. That is uh, the first formula for T-test in terms of one mean population test. Okay, and the one that we did discussed earlier is what we call as unequal variance T-test. Okay, so you have, okay, the formula there on the right hand side, okay, the one in the yellow box, okay, where t is equals to min 1, x bar 1, minus x bar 2 in bracket, minus mu 1, minus mu 2, okay, close bracket. So that is the denu uh, that is the numerator. And then you have, okay, the denumerator into the square root of uh, variance for sample 1 divided by the sample size for 1, and then variance for sample 2 divided by the sample size for 2. So that is unequal variance test, okay? And the, the one that I'm going to introduce now is the second type of uh, t-test for comparing two populations. So what you have on screen, the formula, where you have t is equal to uh, x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is still the same, okay? And then minus with uh, mu 1 minus mu 2 is the same numerator. But the fact is uh, your denumerator now has changed to a new one. Okay, with uh, introduction of uh, variance p. Okay, what is variance p? Okay, so you have square root of s p squared multiplied with in bracket one over uh, sample size one plus one over sample size two. Okay, uh, and then you have the third formula for comparing two population using t test. That is for the match pair. So x bar d is referring to the difference. Okay, so if you have two sample uh, two population being compared. Okay, being packed. So then you need to look at the difference. So and then you need to calculate the mean difference. So that is x bar d. Okay, and the uh, variance of the difference or the standard deviation of the difference s d and the sample size for the pair difference. Okay, that's all that you need to know. So the first step of hypothesis hypothesis testing is still the same. It's just that you need to recognize. Okay, you need to know exactly which formula that you need to use. Either is z or is it a t test. Is it for mean or is it for proportion? So let's look at the test statistic, the formula for the case of unequal variance. Okay, this is where okay uh, the test statistic for mu one minus mu two when the population variance are unequal is given by the formula a different uh, formula which is t is equals to x bar one minus x bar two minus uh, mu one minus mu two in bracket, and then we have s one. Uh, Square divided by n1 plus uh, variance for the second sample, okay, divided by the uh, sample size, okay. So, and then you have the degree of freedom, okay, that uh, new is equals to the weightage formula, okay. So, we have variance 1 divided by sample size 1 plus variance 2 divided by sample size 2, okay. You, you take the square of it, okay, that will become your numerator. And then for the denumerator, you take the same variance for 1 divided by sample size you square, and then you divide by the uh, sample size minus 1. And then you do the same thing, okay, for the second sample, okay, you add both, so that is your denumerator. 
So n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 2, that will uh, combine together to make up your degree of freedom in the case of unequal variance. Okay, the question that you need to be asking yourself now is which test to use. Okay, so just now, okay, uh, to compare two populations using t-test, you have three different type of tests, three different type of formula, basically. So for the match pair, okay, it's very clear that when your uh, po two populations are being paired together, then you need to use, okay, the uh, match pair or the mean difference tests. Okay, but in the case of either unequal or equal variance, Okay, which test statistic that you need to use? Okay, so the key here is that whenever that there is insufficient evidence that the variances are unequal. Okay, even if variance is unknown, but if you have a clue somehow that variance is unequal, then it is preferable to perform the equal variance t-test. Why is this so? Because for any two given sample, the number of the degree of freedom for the equal variance case is greater than or more than the number of degree of freedom for the unequal variance case. Okay, so larger number of degree of freedom have the same effect as having larger sample size. Okay, so basically we already covered the second part of hypothesis testing. Okay, where we discuss the different type of tests for two populations. So it can be uh, two population in terms of mean tests. In terms of two uh, proportion tests, or it can be uh, two population tests for small sample using t tests. Okay, it's either in the case of equal variance, unequal variance, or match pairs. So I hope that uh, you know the difference between all the different type of tests, and you'll be able to recognize which formula that you need to use for step three of hypothesis testing. That's all for today, and I look forward for part five.